evening everyone and a very warm welcome to each and everyone. Thank you for joining uh, our second webinar. The first one we did in, on 19th of uh, March. It was a successful event. This is a time that you have enough and more time to listen to such webinars uh, from the comfort of your home and not to worry about your work, office work. I would like to uh, give a brief about today's webinar. We will be uh, having a speaker from Wadwani Foundation, Mr. Sanjay Gupta. Um, he is an advisory board member to the Wadwani Foundation. He'll be talking to you uh, after my uh, introduction. And uh, we have uh, Mr. Bhaskar Priyadashi from Kogoport, who is a growth consultant. He's been with Kogoport. Kogoport is a logistics technology company who is helping a lot of exporters, importers, small uh, businesses in India, helping their business and uh, uh, helping their, in their logistics process. We have uh, Mr. Gary Spence from UK. He is the CEO and founder of uh, uh, Yota Laboratories Private Limited from UK. Um, he will be presenting immediately after Bhaskar uh, Priyadashi. So uh, welcome. welcome to each and everyone. Thank you for taking your time to join exactly at, at PM today. Our entire webinar may last about one hour, 30 minutes. So we might get done, get it done by around 5.30. So a lot of uh, takeaway. We have all eminent speakers and there are certain house rules that you can uh, raise your hand. If you go to your right hand side, there's a raise your hand. So you can ask your question. You can chat. Um, if you're not able to uh, come on live or even after the, the entire uh, session, we have a social launch where you can network, you can ask questions to the, the experts uh, uh, in our panel. And let me quickly take you through, through uh, Fair Media and why we are getting on to this such kind of a session or what we've been doing in the past 10 years in India. So Fair Media has always been a company focusing on SMEs and startups. Uh, we found there's a major gap in the Indian economy where SMEs are not able to, um, um, you know, learn how to take the business to the next level. They have a lot of clarifications required in their day-to-day -day business, whether it's business or finance or marketing or technology. They don't know whom to reach out to, or they don't have a, a platform where they can learn or help the business grow by getting some kind of a support from a, a from platform a, where they can they can uh, always look at and learn. And we looked at the situation, found out there are more than 50 million. Uh, SMEs and there's no such platforms in India and back in 2009, 8, 7, you know, those days. So we did a quick research and we found that there's a requirement in India. So we, we, ha we have done our own researches and we, we also have a, a fairly good experience in the same similar field right. in India and abroad. So we started a portal called Small Enterprise India. I'll show you a quick uh, presentation on what we do, how we can help you grow your company. So Aspire Media was launched in 2010 as a media and publishing company where we launched our first uh, portal called smallenterpriseindia.com. Smallenterpriseindia.com has got most of the sections what a, business, a small business person requires, whether it's technology or finance or insurance or marketing or even budget travel, uh, logistics um, and so on. We launched the uh, portal in 2010, did multi-city roadshows, went to small, uh, tier two and three markets, uh, did a conference. Uh, we bring in experts, mm -hmm. uh, also help them to know how they can you know, help their business grow with the help of these experts and also from our portal. So just by looking into websites, we know that SME is not going to learn or scale up his business. So we thought the best way is to go reach out to them. So we went to their city, gave them a lot of... Uh, so later we also, also understood that we need this as a magazine, as a monthly magazine. So we launched a uh, small enterprise as a magazine. So we had um, um, digital version. Uh, then we started our work in 2007 to help or to recognize those SMEs who are done well and the startups. Uh, we have two portals, one for SMEs and one for startups uh, called the Aeonian. Uh, we also have a business club called Aspire Business Club. Yet to launch, we are just preparing the final thing where uh, an SME gets more than 30 lakhs worth of benefits from there. So we also have a, a, a platform to help the business reaching out to the right audience through email marketing. Uh, we have a webinar which you are seeing right now, an online survey to understand how the market conditions are according to their requirement. A uh, lot of corporate companies are also using our facilities, uh, what we are mentioning right now. Aspire Consulting, a recent uh, division um, that we launched in 2019, uh, October, to help uh, SMEs uh, get more support uh, from our uh, division, uh, headed by uh, Dr. Krishna Kumar, who is an ex-KPMG, and also with the support of about more than 25 expert uh, consultants, uh, across India. Yeah. We also have industry events where we help corporates learn 
how to approach and how to help SMEs. This is a magazine covers in the past that we have done. Uh, a, a quick brief about modernterpriseindia.com. You can go to the website and see what it is. Uh, our target audience are SMEs, and we go large into the rural market or the Taiwan, Tai Two, and Metro. The circulations are pretty well mostly on the digital because the print, uh, we have controlled our print. And this has also been uh, subscribed by many um, SMEs and uh, institutions across across India. All the categories where you look at manufacturing or IT or FMCG retail, you can see all the SMEs in all this category um, receive a magazine. All our attendees are our conference and awards uh, webinars get this magazine. Now, the digital version is available in Maxter yeah. online and also yeah. on Geo. Geo is absolutely free. Geo has got more than 250 million access in the market. And uh, who has got a Geo Prime gets a uh, magazine, monthly magazine free to read. And not only our magazine, a lot of other magazines, but specifically for an SME magazine, uh, you will find only a small enterprise which has a lot of information about your business. Uh, how we are um, publishing our, our information in this magazine, I'll just take you through our editorial calendar. Every month, we specifically uh, target on a certain subject. It could be future workplaces, um, how to keep your workplace uh, more interesting or more attractive to retail talent, how to grow from small to big, uh, startup essentials or franchise, manufacturing, banking and finance. You can see the entire uh, the cover story and specifically we cover that. And each issue, more than 60% will be the cover story coverage so that most of your uh, you know queries are being answered there. Uh, further to that, you can always reach us to our uh, inquiry. Or These are the magazine's covers. So if you look at, we have technology, one month is going to be technology, another month is going to be small to big, future workplaces, uh, logistics, banking and finance, women business, marketing, and you know, there are many other titles as I mentioned there. So the business club is just forming a platform now. A uh, lot of value add for SMEs, which we are coming out with a B2B platform where they get the benefit of it. This is will be launched later on uh, this year. So these are the awards. Uh, the, the fourth annual award is going to happen in October. Uh, we will definitely inform all of you to, to register. Everyone who attend uh, our conference and um, you know, webinars get a free entry there. SMEs are in different classes uh, that we have segregated, micro, small, and medium. And um, we have the startup uh, platform called the Aeonian, which is a Greek name, um, meaning unstoppable. Earlier, uh, we worked with KPMG to build the entire criteria to, to decide the winner for the Small Business Awards. For Aeonian, we, we teamed up with Deloitte to uh, come up with a similar uh, you know, selection mm -hmm. process. We have more than a um, lakh database which companies use. And uh, this is how we reach out to our SMEs with a lot of their uh, requirements that if you look at the industry segment, you can see the industry segments that is being um, you know, uh, given your break up here and across India, um, various states that you can see. So this is a quick brief about SPAC Consulting. This is created to help uh, SMEs to see how their business can be taken further, where are the leaks, and how we can help them grow further. In some cases, we do free. In some cases, a very minimal charge, depending on the complexity of the business. So we have a corporate um, event team which helps uh, companies uh, target their audience and create a bespoke event for them. And these are a few of the pictures from our past events, from our awards, from our expo. And um, these are some of partners whom we have partnered with in the past. So this is what uh, SPI Media is all about. Basically, what we try to do is uh, impart knowledge with this kind of facility. Who we, wants to learn, you're most welcome to attend any of our events or uh, webinars. It's absolutely free for the we don't charge. Uh, just because of this specific season um, uh, showing a lot of uh, um, uh, progress from our past even now. So once again, a warm welcome to each and everyone. I would like to invite uh, uh, Sanjay Gupta from um, Wadwani Foundation. Uh, I've given you a brief about Sanjay. Sanjay has been a business leader over 30 years of experience in the industry. He has worked with companies like American Express, uh, Motorola, and uh, now he's uh, been an advisory board member to Wadwani. Welcome, Mr. Sanjay. Very good afternoon to everybody. I see a fairly large uh, attendance today, and that is uh, very exciting. You know, I think uh, everybody who's probably on the call today on this seminar has seen or experienced some crisis or difficult situation. Uh, I have seen a few. Um, on a personal note, when I was growing up, I remember being in the middle of a river when four uh, fighter jets came to, uh, bomber jets came to bomb a, a rifle factory right next to where we lived. 
one went down shot by anti aircraft gun guns and uh, a difficult situation then uh, arose for us i remember my father used to work in a in a set of factories that were in a troubled industrial zone and at one time when we were very young uh, they were surrounded by uh, uh, labor who were unhappy and i remember my father never came home for almost a week because uh, they were kept in that office with barely any food and water and in fact uh, his colleague's life was lost so uh, there was definitely a lot of uh, tumult uh, as a result many years later i was in new york in downtown manhattan um, and looking down at a big hole which had uh, a few months ago had been a very tall building called the world trade center and the fall of that giant uh, sent uh, many tremors across the world, impacting politics and impacting uh, economies. Uh, we saw the financial crisis with the going down of Lehman Brothers. And I remember my company, American Express, which was still then very cash rich, suddenly had to go to the US government to help uh, keep standing because of a cash crisis that resulted. Um, I remember living in Taiwan literally for a year because we had a $1 billion credit crisis where people who had borrowed on the credit card uh, refused to pay back. And uh, we had to work there to recover whatever money uh, that was possible. SARS in 2004 nearly stopped our business around China and Southeast Asia. And I remember landing in Singapore uh, on the 27th of December 2004 and the tsunami had struck a day before. And the next month, month and a half was all about helping people all across Southeast Asia find uh, loved ones and uh, help them uh, help many people get back home safely. In one of the businesses I led, I was responsible for global service centers across the world. And our entire life was about risk assessment and uh, preparing for crisis because so much was concentrated in these centers. Uh, which serve many other parts of the world. But this time, this crisis uh, is different. It is global in a very profound way. It affects and uh, can impact every person uh, from a safety and a health perspective, physical health, mental health, emotional health. And it's definitely, definitely uh, a significant uh, sledgehammer blow on the economy of the world. Uh, probably sparing no one. This is a very connected world. Uh, this is the world of the internet. This is the world of travel. This is the world of trade, commerce, all uh, finance, all connected with each other. Just think about this. Around 1900, we were, as a planet, 2 billion people. And since then, we have grown about four times in population. And since then, we've, all, we've grown more than 50 times in terms of the world uh, GDP. So a small ball, which was there about 100 years ago, which was the planet Earth, and which was not very connected. So if you had a crisis in one part, you didn't necessarily always feel the impact elsewhere. And if things fell, they didn't fall that, that much. But now with this huge economic ball, uh, everything is connected. And if this crumbles, it's like a gas balloon waiting to completely uh, shrivel up. So. Um, while we must have hope, I have to tell you on a lighter note that if you're looking for someone to predict the future, then only ask God or maybe a South Korean, or if you're desperate enough, uh, uh, maybe check with a consultant. I'm saying that uh, lightly with no, no offense to anyone. So what do you do when you're confronted with a situation of this kind? You should do this anyway, but what do you do when you're confronted with a situation of this kind? You really have to make a quick uh, assessment of your risks. And risk assessment means you have to have a full system. Uh, you have to sub start with your supply chain. You have to think about your suppliers. You have to think about your partners. Let me give you some examples. A company we partner with had already started feeling the impact of uh, this crisis because they make uh, computer technology and there were parts coming from China that had completely stopped because factories had stopped producing. And very quickly, this March quarter, which was going to be an important quarter for them, was going south. And now that uh, China seems to be stabilizing and maybe factories will start producing there, they still don't know if they will get the parts because ports won't be open maybe and transportation 
uh, might be suspended for a period of time. Another company I, uh, I'm associated with was just on the verge of getting a, a term loan uh, when Yes Bank uh, crashed. And uh, since then, they haven't been able to find someone to sign off on that, that facility. And it's had a really crippling impact on their business. Another business that I am associated with is a B2C sales business. They outsource a lot of the tele-selling uh, to a third party. And frankly, uh, this situation has hardly impacted them because very quickly the telecallers have all started working remotely and uh, their business is pretty much continuing almost as, uh, as usual. So the supply chain is an important part of the first as aspect of risk assessment. And there are different uh, levers there that one has to look at and one has to be able to uh, zero in on to figure out where the risks lie and where uh, there's opportunity to continue uh, doing things as if nothing has changed. The second part of risk assessment is uh, to look at how you create value as a business. And most often it involves uh, it's synergistic with understanding your people risks. Uh, first of all, you have to look at the protection and the safety of these people. And if you're running a software center, especially in this crisis where everybody's potentially congregated in some large, uh, large office space, uh, you clearly have to do something uh, relatively quickly to, to de-risk your people and your business. If you are a sales-oriented business, for example, if you do door-to-door -door selling, uh, there are significant issues in terms of whether that can continue and that is another kind of risk that you have to uh, solve for. You have to understand access and reach of people. So uh, a, a business uh, I'm on the board of has their factory in uh, Sitar Ganj, uh, a hill town uh, in, an, uh, in a, in a tax-friendly zone. And all their work people, they come from very close proximity. And as soon as this crisis struck, uh, they were able to quickly bring a core number of people uh, into the factory to live there and to work within the factory. Now, of course, things have changed a bit, but uh, they had the ability to do so, which quite often uh, others may not. In our own uh, work that we do, I work. Uh, I, I lead a company called English Helper. On a, uh, over a weekend, we decided, much before the government proclaimed it uh, to be uh, required, that all our people uh, should now work remotely. And within 24 to 48 hours, every individual across 85 person was working remotely. And yes, there were some minor hiccups here and there. Uh, but pretty much everything is uh, business as usual as people settle down because they can all work off the cloud using computers and the internet. And then uh, you have to look at uh, what is critical and important when you think about your people. So when business is normal, uh, the definition of critical people and important people, everybody's important, uh, is quite different from when there is a crisis. I know for business, which is incenting its security personnel uh, to come and safeguard assets during this critical time. And because it's risky for them, uh, is obviously giving them uh, hardship allowances, ensuring them for potential uh, health difficulties. And at the same time, high-flying marketing people who otherwise uh, are, are considered very uh, significant for the business have been asked to proceed on a, uh, on, uh, on a period of time for on leave uh, without pay as the, as the company tries to conserve its cash. The third part of your uh, system are your customers and distributors. You have to understand what is their own uh, likelihood of, uh, of business continuation. Uh, so there's a friend of mine uh, who runs a large BPO. And within a few weeks of this uh, crisis emerging, uh, he's had to lay off uh, close to 1,000 people. He runs a service uh, delivery company. And they have a huge concentration in the travel industry. Uh, so concentration of, of customers can create uh, create a risk of their kind. Uh, the other is uh, the ability to pay. So as soon as uh, uh, times get difficult, everybody's uh, hanging on their, onto their cash or some people don't even have access to cash. And understanding uh, ability to pay is critical. Being able to discount receivables uh, is important. And funnily enough, uh, quite often we are uh, reluctant to work with the business because it's a cash-heavy business, uh, working with, uh, sorry, with government because uh, governments take uh, time to pay. But suddenly in this crisis, working with government seems to be a safe haven because you know you're going to get your money and most likely banks are be will be willing to look at that AR more favorably than they uh, would uh, with, uh, with other, uh, other kinds of customers. 
then your distribution system, if it's heavily physical uh, versus uh, what's clearly uh, turning out to be advantageous right now, uh, online or virtual, if you will, uh, what is what is the mix of that? W who are your customers? Are they uh, consumers? Therefore, what would be their behavior? Do you have chunky goods that you sell, which have large ticket sizes? That's going to be tough in this environment. Customers are going to be very finicky about uh, discretionary spend, large spend, uh, and they'll button up because their personal finances will start getting pretty strained. And of course, uh, if you're working with the government, like I just said, uh, the government becomes very secure suddenly, but also given this crisis, there is an entire likelihood, and in fact, we've heard that from the government across the world and, and in India, that there will be a lot of expenditure to stimulate the economy. And so therefore, working with the government or the public sector might just be uh, an advantage at this point in time. Fourth uh, stakeholder or part of your system has to be your investors. Um, what kind of investors do you have? Do you have investor risk? Do you have investor confidence? Uh, I'm part of a company, and within uh, last week, they called an emergency meeting, and they laid out a three to six month uh, plan, which looked pretty uh, bleak, which looked very uh, difficult. And they very quickly uh, turned around and asked, uh, asked us uh, how uh, we would pitch in uh, to support the company during this uh, cash difficult time. And you could see that uh, the diversity of investors was clearly in their favor. Uh, the smaller investors, the individual investors, though otherwise uh, financially sound or financially well off, were very reluctant to uh, loosen their purse strings. Whereas uh, institutional investors who are looking at a portfolio are beginning to figure out which bets to support versus which ones not to. Uh, if you uh, move out from these stakeholders, you have to. Uh, move to looking at uh, the environment because uh, during this kind of a crisis, the environment is constantly uh, creating new challenges. Uh, the environment is always creating uh, challenges. So I remember many years ago, uh, I used to work for uh, with the tea industry and there was a lot of, uh, I'd call profiteering happening. And on one fine day, the government announced that 75% of all produce from tea gardens would have to go through public auctions. And that changed the operating model overnight. And many, uh, many gardens uh, had to go out of business because they weren't uh, ready for that kind of uh, demand and push on their margins and strains on their, on their cash flows. Mm -hmm. Data privacy laws have uh, locked businesses out of, uh, out of your, Europe. And if you're exposed to things like foreign exchange, um, there's always the risk. So uh, how well are you hedged against uh, the, the government policies as they evolve? And the economic uh, forces as they move around uh, is an important part of your risk assessment uh, view as you look across your own system. You also have to look uh, very closely at market trends. And a very simple example is right now, anybody uh, who has the capability of uh, going online, they are in good shape because pretty much everybody's at home. Pretty much that's going to be the case for a period of time. And without having to spend huge marketing dollars, if you're online, if you have value, if you're attractive, you can suddenly make uh, a, a business uh, out of what you're doing. Uh, we have online products, and over the last uh, few days, we've seen volumes jump up uh, almost 10x uh, without any kind of uh, change. In fact, we dropped our marketing uh, investments. We're trying to save our own cash, and despite that, the volumes uh, have gone up, and the quality of the volumes have gone up because we see that in, in terms of the stickiness of people who come uh, to check us out uh, online. So also what you've got to find out for yourself as you're looking at your risk is, are you flexible enough to, uh, to move your business in the direction the market is heading? Um, once you have uh, made an assessment of your uh, business risk, uh, the next question is, what do you do? And all of this is happening real time. I might be describing it in a in a sequential way, but you're kind of drinking from the fire hose, as they say. And uh, how are you reacting to this situation? And the first thing I'll say that you cannot do anything unless you're personally uh, strong. Uh, I have a view that uh, uh, in a principle, it's the principle of the oxygen mask. It's like when you're flying in an airplane and they say, when it gets turbulent and the mask drops, uh, don't try and help the child next to you get strong yourself first. And I think that's very important. 
uh, being very strong, being personally strong with personal finances, being personally strong with safety, security of, our, of your family and your loved ones, and being personally strong yourself and looking for help at that time, at this time, uh, is not a bad thing to do at all because it is a challenging time for any leader, especially people who are responsible for many other people um, and, and the next uh, few weeks and months of their life. But what actions do you take? Um, I believe the first action you have to take is, is has to be people focused. Um, are you focused and are you acting to ensure the safety and security of your people? And during this time, uh, you have to communicate. And I know of umpteen very good businesses, umpteen very good business leaders who are spending 70, 80% of the time right now communicating with their people. They're sending them emails. Uh, they're uh, hosting calls, they're getting into video chats, they're calling people one-on-one, -on -one. they're talking to the leaders, they're talking to their front line, they're talking to everybody. And they're talking and there is no talking too much. And it's very important to both speak and listen. Uh, in fact, it's very important to listen uh, as much as it is important to uh, speak. This is also a time when you want to make your people very busy. Uh, we have a team out there in the fields uh, in the field, meaning in the regions in, in, and out there where our schools are. Uh, we work very closely with government schools and all schools are shut. And now you have 15, 20 people out there uh, who can wake up one morning and say, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And very quickly, uh, we have converted, uh, taken those people and pointed them in a, in, in a new direction, uh, which is very, uh, which is very uh, clear, which is very specific, which is very measurable. And, and which is very tangible. They can see what they're doing uh, and respond to uh, the outcomes of their, of their actions. So keeping people very busy. I also think this is a time to be very truthful with, with people. Bullets are flying and people are in that uh, foxhole together and uh, being able to trust each other is, is critical and there's no substitute for that. Um, along with people and as you secure your people, the next important thing is cash. Cash is queen and king. And this is the time when you quickly plan for the worst, you hope for the best. Um, you have to be prepared that maybe your collections will be almost zero. You have to be prepared that your suppliers are going to come and knock at your door and uh, ask for every uh, rupee and every paisa that you owe them. Um, and you have to find ways to keep your cash, uh, obviously ethical ways and uh, lawful ways but you have to keep your cash. And you have to change everything that you have into cash. In fact, um, you know you have to make your balance sheet liquid. So uh, question every cost, and obviously costs that are discretionary, um, you know, everybody understands that, go after them. If you have to cut out marketing, and we've done things like looked at efficiency audits that we were doing and other stuff of that kind and said, stop that, stop that, stop that, because uh, this isn't a good time. Uh, to do those things. Uh, renegotiate payments. Uh, I, I'm on a board and, and, and they have a, everybody has a cash problem and they were looking at the next three, six months with large repayments uh, against a term loan to a bank. And we talked about uh, renegotiating with the bank. They just begun the renegotiation with the bank. And thankfully the RBI governor has announced a moratorium for three months that allows people to hold back their installment payments uh, and hopefully uh, that might get extended. Situation uh, doesn't improve. Um, and, and another example of uh, uh, converting uh, your assets to cash is, uh, you know, we've we've got offices that we've got uh, around the country, and each office is secured uh, as far as the lease is concerned with a certain deposit. And we've told the landlords keep the deposit, we'll keep the rent because for the next few months, uh, cash outflows are uh, significantly, uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, important for us to prevent cash outflows. And finally, bite the bullet. Because uh, very quickly you will see as you forecast into the near future that your situation is not going to be looking good. And don't soft pedal. Uh, there will be some hard decisions. Take those decisions early. Uh, these hard decisions could be including touching elements that affect your people. One example is to hold back certain pay. Uh, I know of a company where the CEO has gone to zero, uh, you know, withdrawal from the business. Obviously, uh, senior leaders have taken a massive cut, and every employee has uh, has taken some cut. And the cut isn't a reduction in their pay at this point, 
but just simply a promise to pay back later when uh, the business's finances are, are better. And that's important to communicate because uh, people are worried, people are concerned, and being able to be clear with them as to what the time frame uh, expected with no promises and the fact that uh, they should expect to get this money. As you're dealing tactically uh, with the day-to-day, -day, you have to start thinking of the long term. And uh, do you still have a viable business? So in our case, for example, a large part of our business is working with the school system. And you know, most likely, schools are going to be shut for, for six months. So I engage with another business where they make oil purifiers uh, for large hydraulics, for the construction business. And those businesses aren't going to rev up. Uh, easily in the short term, even if they do, they're going to be very cash very, they're going to be procuring very carefully. Um, does that mean that uh, this business is no longer viable? People have worked hard to build uh, the businesses they have built. They've taken a long time to get where they have, uh, where they have reached. Um, so what can you do? Can you take uh, advantage of the situation? Can you swivel your business a bit? Uh, for us, for example, can we go online with education? For the big filter maker, can they start making filters for consumers like tractors and trucks? Uh, and is the business model changing? Is virtual remote working uh, becoming a reality? If you've stopped spending money somewhere for now, should you stop that forever? Is that waste that you've eliminated? And now you realize that uh, fixed cost is the devil. So for uh, this is an opportunity to get rid of that devil. Imagine if you are running a cloud kitchen versus a restaurant. Restaurants have a really tough time in this environment. Cloud kitchens probably will be better off because they have uh, lower fixed costs. So in summary, this is a crisis like uh, none other. And uh, trying to predict the future is, uh, is perilous, is dangerous, but we must have hope. Um, we, as leaders, we must protect ourselves first. We must have our own uh, oxygen mask on. We must be strong before we can lead others and, and our businesses. Uh, to safety. We have to act very swiftly and we have to protect our people and we have to conserve our cash. And I think those two things are very important. We have to manage day by day. Uh, if you start thinking too far ahead every day, uh, it's going to be difficult. You can't help that, but you have to manage day by day. Uh, you have to start swiveling your business as fast as you can in the direction it requires. And there is sometimes no choice because uh, the environment is such. And frankly, um, if you do all of these things, uh, and if you can survive, you probably come out uh, stronger and better than where you started. Uh, with that, thank you for listening. And I think uh, depending on time, maybe I can take a few questions. This is Shravan. Hi, Shravan. Hi. We are a manufacturer in solar industry. What we can do better in terms of cash flow? So that's the, my only question. Uh, in manufacturing, the practices that I see, Shrava, uh, include three or four things quite generally. Number one, uh, trying to negotiate uh, better credit or continue to hold uh, supplier payments. Hard thing to do, uh, but it's an area of focus. Completely eliminating inventory. We get very, uh, we get very passionate about the possibility of earning future profits with lovely stuff that we have made. But wow. what is sitting on your balance sheet, if it is in cash, then it's dangerous at this point. So completely right. trying to eliminate inventory, taking right. receivables if possible, collection, but maybe going to your bank, renegotiating with your bank. And uh, if you are on, in, in any form of rented premises, trying to figure out how to uh, uh, reduce, if you are multiple sites, trying to consolidate maybe in one site, and then maybe deciding to work only with a very uh, skeletal you know, number of people and uh, allowing others to potentially stay at home at reduced pay uh, till such time or whichever uh, salary structure you have uh, till such time as you can uh, get back to normal business. Luckily, the government has also given some leeway to hold back uh, payments of uh, TDS and GST for a few months. And so looking at those kinds of things as well. Um, so there's no uh, there's no magic. It's about getting into every detail and fighting very hard across your entire system that I referred to. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. One more gentleman who raised the hand. His name is Oxy Delight. Hey, hi. Uh, this is Ashit from Quick Shop. Uh, it is an online uh, shopping platform. 
and we currently are running uh, in pan india we are providing service like we have a uh, usp uh, of like uh, we provide the products in a budget pocket uh, friendly prices so the uh, the main problem is uh, that we are facing one problem so uh, we are looking to raise fund but uh, we don't know means how to approach our investor we can explain our uh, like uh, online uh, platform so your question so your question is how do you find investors who are at this time uh, willing to look at your business and uh, raise fund uh, and 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 manage to raise fund yeah yeah correct well i'd say two or three things i think that's going to be to be truly uh, candid even though you're online it's going to be hard because the fundraising cycle typically is at best 3 months uh, and most likely closer to 6 months if you go out to institutional uh, funders Mm-hmm. and and that would be uh, very hard for you right now also the mood is such that you'll find yourself valued very uh, uh, you know uh, conservatively so you'll give away a large chunk of your business uh, to someone and that might be okay if you're in a very tough situation uh, your best bet is to uh, it looks like you have a tight shop i'm guessing given i don't know what the stage of your business is but your best bet is to try and hold on with uh your angels or fen- friends and family uh, which may not be the state uh, stage where you are at and i and i think a lot of it will depend to your question on um, many of your business uh, realities are you what's your rate of growth what's the market and so on and so forth so i i don't have a black and white do this and you'll get money answer but uh, i'd say that it will be hard for you to quickly get uh, institutional money it will be easier for you to get money from individual investors or angel funds who you know or who know you and will be able to respond quickly without bureaucracy and without uh, too much process okay thank you you're welcome good thank you very much thank you thank you sanjay it was really very really info informative and thank you for your time so we'll have a have a short commercial uh, running on right now Globally, 90% of the companies are micro, small or medium-sized enterprises, but less than 3% of them trade internationally. Unavailability of fair logistics costs, lack of time to explore new markets and inadequate resources put the SMEs at a disadvantage. Imagine a world where these SMEs have the tools, time and expert assistance to start trading internationally and grow their businesses. Kogoport provides all this in one place. With Kogoport, you can discover freight rates, book containers, insure your cargo and track shipments all at one place. This will save you up to 15 hours per week on a shipment. Even if you are not an expert in logistics, we will connect you with industry experts. Experts who will handle your shipments with the help of our technology so that you can focus on what you love. finding new customers keeping them happy and exporting and importing high quality products explore kogoport.com now we love mr bakar priyadarshi from kogoport who's going to who do address Welcome, uh, Mr. Bhaskar Piyadarshi, growth consultant at uh, Kogoport. Kogoport is a young company and um, one of the fastest growing uh, logistics technology company. Uh, Bhaskar, please take it forward. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, Dojo. So, hi everyone. Welcome to this webinar. So, actually, we all have seen what has happened within the last 14 days. To be very honest, the things have been scary for each and every business. And it's time that we need to actually assess what the business is looking like and how is it going to pan further. I just going through the news today to the morning and I just saw the update from IMO that they were telling that this phase that we are into right now due to covid-19 might bring a recession which is worse for even like somewhat near to the 2008 recession what we saw what all are the things that you people can take care of while you are into this particular thing and so that you can overgo this particular phase of covid-19 and the things that are going to happen after that and what is the thing that will let you basically sail your boat through this entire land of uncertainty called as covid-19 so here we go so it's how you check the resiliency of your business and 
in the terms of this COVID-19. So I'll just start with the first three points that how can you overcome the hard times that are here right now? So the first thing will be the self-analysis of your business strength. The second major thing that you can do is keep your customers and your partners close. By partners here, what I mean is the people who are there to support your business growth. Those are your partners out there. And the third and the most important thing, secure a financial resilience. So what will these occur? And these things, if you do something like this, you'll know where your business stands at this particular phase of time. Let me uh, start with a quote of Charles Darwin, in which he says, it is not the strongest that of the species that will survive, not the smartest of the species that will survive, but it will be the species that will be fastest to adopt that will survive. So with the things changing on, in the day-to-day -day life and as we see out here you can see that there will be things which we have never imagined before for our business to come forward and which will have to overcome during this time so let's start with how to analyze your business trends first thing you need to refocus on the products and the services that you're going to offer to your customers because as we start so the right now the market has been locked down but as we start off with the markets once again, what is the thing that is going to go, like everyone's going to go after? I'll give you an example of myself. So last Tuesday, Mr. Narendra Modi, he announced a lockdown for 21 days. What is the first thing that I checked in my house? Do I have an active internet connection? Do I have grocery to cook my own food? And do I have the daily essential needs that I have to keep myself in a hygienic way? These are some of the essential goods that I want. I did not check whether do I have fruits in my uh, fridge or not. I did not check whether my AC is working or not. What I checked was for something that is a basic need of me, not something that is a luxury of mine. So we need to refocus on the services and the product that we are offering. Is my service a basic need or is my service a luxury for the customer? And then in the meantime, what you can see is how good is your ability to supply to the customers once the market opens. Because tomorrow the market is gonna open and suppose the product is gonna lie in the essential part. If you are not able to supply, you're not able to create a very, uh, established well enforced force of the supply, then you'll be a, not be able to cater to the 100% demands and you'll somehow lose out on the market. The third will be monitor competitive markets. So now let's take a very small example out here of onion. We have onion market in Nashik and we have an onion market in Gujarat. So now, if you are trading onions domestically, then you must be knowing what of the other markets are happening. What is the rate out there? Because tomorrow, when we go out in the race of essentials, the one which is having the best price or having the best deal out there will win. So these are the few things that you can do to analyze what's the strength of the business which you are having right now. If we go to the next, the next part will be keep your customers and partners very close. Because you need to understand what is the needs of a customer or the need of the person whom you're serving right now. What is the changes that will happen? Because everyone, no matter what you were dealing in early, what you were providing to a customer early, it will be that once the phase goes out, what will be the first thing that you'll be going to look after? And that will be something you'll be only be knowing once you're in regular touch with them. Because for these 21 days, while we all are locked down in our homes, to stop COVID-19, what we can do is we can take a pulse of what our customers need. What is the thing that is most important for them at this point of time? And based on that, we can assess whether we are adding value to the business or not. Because as I quoted earlier, let me go back to the same example. A person selling pomegranate versus a person selling onion. For me, the value of a person selling onion right now will be much more than a person selling pomegranate. So, it is for me to assess that whether the products and the services that I'm serving is adding much more value to his business or not, or whether I'm just one in a million. And once you start adding value to his business, he will be there again to see whether you are providing him services at the right time or not. And the third will be establishing a demand side rapid response team. But this, what I mean is what dependencies do your customer have apart from the basic service? Is your present customer a risk for you or is it an asset for you once the things change 
can you can your particular business afford to give that customer something that he needs once the market lifts up suppose your customer needs a credit and i am not my my business can't stand that that means is not a asset to your business thereafter at this time you can also do a credit check of the customer that how liable is he to, how reliable is he to return me back my money and these all things will help you like basically keep your customers and partners close at this point of time and these will help you have a proper check of how your business is going to transform in the next quarter or like half a year the third and the most important thing which will be here will be secure a financial resilience because at the end of the day what needs to keep you going is like your cash and your liquidity in your entire business that you have so you need to manage your cash and liquidity very strong as mr sanjay also said in the previous session that you need to see which of the functions are performing to the best which of the functions are actually not giving me as much as a desirable result where is what i can do a cost cutting because you need at the end of the day if you see out here you'll need to have a cost ceiling for things or you'll run out of cash very fast and once you run out of cash then there will be times that you will not be desiring at all at during this particular time period so you need to see how your cash and your liquidity is being turning uh, turning out for you and the next part will be stress test your cash flow so basically you have some things right now in your hand right you have a particular cash in your hand right now but things that are going to be there is suppose if your business does not turn out to be the way it you are desiring it to be suppose your business are not at the peak of their time for the next 7 to 8 months will the existing cash that you have in your hand or will the existing money that you have in your ledger help you to thrive through the period if yes then well and good if no then you need to start thinking of an alternative way pick up and set up immediate action plans and long term action plans immediate action plans that will help your business to survive and long term action plans that will help your business to flourish because if you see a market that is going under recession will boom again very soon but as it said here is sometime less worse than hope in the term of hope what i mean out here hoping that market tomorrow will boom i don't think that i can risk my business right now i need to have a very strong balance on how my cash is going and the next what might help you at this point of time is you can adopt digitization because very clearly out here all of us right now are working from our business is right now not working so what can you do you can reduce the distance between you people by adopting digitization start handling meetings online get in touch with your customers online and look at for the online communication and online things that you can do for your business so that if your business is marked in a online territory then you don't need to do offline sales it's not a matter of whether person goes and then pitches it for you so adopt digitization is something that can help you and you can look forward to how to execute that plan within this next days to come and then have a very clear communication to your employees what does their statement of purpose for their work means at this point what is the thing that is happening maintain a two way communication channel between yourself and your employees because that is something that will help them regain trust on you and they will be very clear okay i need to do this so in order to get this thing through and that is something that will be helpful for you it's not a normal day in the office it's not a day in a life of the bhaskar it's a sudden change that I, that we all have seen due to this virus that is making us do these things so you need to revise the statement of purpose and have a very clear communication to employees that what is expected from them and the last but not the least establish a two way communication channel so that you can receive feedback from them at what is working and what is not don't take any panic step do calculate the risk and the profits that you can make with such thing which you are trying to test that out so if you do all these i think you will have a fair idea of where your business stands in this entire haphazard situation that we have right if you have any particular question specific to your business you can definitely mail to me at this particular email id else i think i'll be open for questions right now so hi mr manish uh, hi hi baskar so uh, i am a corporate lawyer and i i heard you and uh, sanjay talking about uh, challenges and going forward how do you handle the situation so uh, i don't have any question but only comment on you and what mr sanjay has communicated so only two things i just wanted to add which uh, uh, emerging businesses should 
consider as a fallout of covid exposure is review of their ongoing contracts and uh, specifically from the risk mitigation point of view and there is a possibility of differences or disputes may be taking place after this uh, covid 19 uh, exposure so we may have to uh, business may have to work uh, towards that how do we iron out or how do we address those differences on disputes and should not end up in going to court or arbitrator so we should actually try to see how do we amicably address these differences and disputes because nobody wants at this stage or after this covid 19 to go to court or arbitration but people would like to focus on business and try to resolve their disputes amicably Thank you. Thanks a lot, Mr. Manish, for adding on to this. Hi, Lakshya. My, my name is uh, Lakshya. So I we are into the blockchain plus AI business. Yeah. Uh, we have created a product which is to uh, avoid the fake news because right now there is so much fake news going on for COVID nineteen. Everybody is uh, confused which is real, which is fake. We have a protocol with us. We have made that. But the problem is that the government takes these things when the uh, uh, event is over. Now the COVID nineteen will over. They will implement then. Then what is the use then? because the main fake news the main impact of that fake news is right now the people are facing indian government is announcing is like we have this and we have this the people in whatsapp are announcing something so people are getting confused which is to believe or which is not to believe that's the problem that i think the india will face very soon so actually rakesh uh, something that i would like to add on to this is that uh, first of all a very great initiative if you are developing something to actually stop the fake news because right now even i see my whatsapp is filled with forward guys so uh, what i can tell you about this is that yeah we are actually progressing very soon uh, no matter what uh, i think that there is a scope of this because if you see out there multiple people are doing tests for the viral things that are going online uh, said to be the lion is roaming across the streets of russia which was going online telling that vladimir has put on lions on the street to lock people down so these are the things that are being taken and people were you right there to bust out that no that is not a real news so yeah that is there and uh, to be honest that this thing has a very good scope in the future we will have a short break now so uh, thank you very much for the uh, short and crisp presentation uh, we'll just run a quick uh, the commercial once again because we got on to the next uh, presentation thank you baska thanks a lot globally 90% of the companies are micro small or medium sized enterprises but less than 3% of them trade internationally Unavailability of fair logistics costs, lack of time to explore new markets, and inadequate resources put the SMEs at a disadvantage. Imagine a world where these SMEs have the tools, time, and expert assistance to start trading internationally and grow their businesses. Kogoport provides all this in one place. With Kogoport, You can discover freight rates, book containers, insure your cargo and track shipments all at one place. This will save you up to 15 hours per week on a shipment. Even if you are not an expert in logistics, we will connect you with industry experts. Experts who will handle your shipments with the help of our technology so that you can focus on what you love. Finding new customers, keeping them happy and exporting and importing high quality products. explore kogoport.com now let me welcome gary pen pen from uh, laboratories uk gary is a veteran in the uh, technology space i think i will give the opportunity to gary to talk more about the subject today welcome gary please take over joe thank you good good afternoon india i am currently in the uk we all know the current issue obviously with covid-19 and what got to laboratories is about new emerging technologies we are in our sixth year and myself give you a quick background i am a certified supply chain expert also within the it industry and cybersecurity and in the past 6 years we have been trying to convince large corporate companies that by going online and by doing meetings like we are today is the way forward and we can see the covid-19 situation has actually forced this issue a lot of companies globally are now facing 
a change. And what is happening? We've seen the shares of Zoom shoot up through the roof. Or the market itself is changing and supply chain as a whole is also changing. If we look at the top companies that are out there today, they are all internet-based, internet-driven. Amazon, Alibaba, Airbnb, Uber, so on, so on. And these are all new emerging companies that are bringing new methodologies to how we work. And we are also looking at advances with drones, with automation, automized uh, vehicles and so forth. So the COVID-19, as dreadful as it is, or it is a global issue. And that has never happened before. We have had issues in specific areas. Even SARS was localized to such. But now every single country has been affected by this. And this is where we see the new emerging technologies will start coming to the fold very, very quickly. And the major companies that adapt now will be the ones who grow rapidly when the markets reopen. And by doing that and by accepting the change, we are bringing forward the next generation of businesses. And every company now needs to take a step back and look at how they do business. In the past, I have jumped on a plane for eight hours, had a three hour meeting and come back. Ridiculous. You can have a face to face meeting like we are today online without going anywhere. It is no different to sitting around a conference table. We can do it from the luxury of our homes or from our offices without needing to travel across the world. Technology can be deployed anywhere it has no boundaries software can be delivered overnight it doesn't need large installs so supply chains that are currently still active here in the uk all our shops are closed all our retail clothing businesses are all closed our restaurants are closed the only thing you can do at this moment in time is go to a shop or go for a walk but you can still go online and you can still purchase products. So the supply chain of online businesses is still functioning. And this is where the new emerging technologies are occurring. Where we see within the supply chain as a whole having issues is around farming, agriculture. How do we transport products? And all this can be done. So one of the topics that we've done extensive research on is new emerging technology within the blockchain and within smart contracts. Up until recently, major corporate companies had 90, 180 days before they would pay invoices. And this is crippling small businesses, medium businesses. And I know with India, the laws have recently changed within cryptocurrencies. And people think of Bitcoin and Ethereum as cryptocurrencies. However, governments are now looking to digitize currency. And the advantage to that is you can transfer funds within minutes. You can place smart contracts and have the funds transferred to you as a company instantaneously from anywhere in the world. So what is a smart contract? A smart contract is a digitalized contract within two entities or 50 entities. It, you can add to it as you go along. The advantage within supply chain that we have seen in the extensive research we have done is what we call the field to fork methodology. So from raw material all the way through to the consumer. And the smart contract can trace this all the way through. So to give you an example, if you are a manufacturer, you might have 100 items that you require to build your product. The smart contract will automatically check your stock control it will order automatically so you have got just in time supply chain so when the smart contract will know that you are using a hundred a thousand items per day it will make sure that you have always got that stocked up the advantage too is that you are paying for the product as soon as it reaches your depot so as soon as a a delivery happens and it's digitally signed, the funds leave your account and go to the person who produced the 
the equipment. It reduces time. It reduces the requirements for payroll. It re reduces any issues. It automatically pays all the way through. And by digitizing the whole system, there is huge advantages. One, for waste, that you don't require excessive waste but you're not also running out as well. What we also are seeing within our industry, within technology, there is now coming to the fold with organizations and businesses is more adaptation of using software, using hardware, using the cloud and what we call edge cloud technology. So it's stored locally. One of the main topics is around smart technology, smart cities, smart homes. And this is where the expansion is going to start developing. The technology is already there. There's some technology coming to the fold that will be here very, very quickly. But everybody needs to understand that technology is there to disrupt. COVID-19, if anything, has accelerated this going forward because large corporates are now starting to look at how they can work. Even if you have a very heavy workforce that you need in manufacturing, it is going to start disrupting the industry. And disruptive technologies is where the SMEs can jump on relatively quickly. It's primarily as a service industry. So you're not going to have to spend hundreds of thousands or millions on bringing in the software or the hardware. It is already out there and it can be adopted for your business. People who do consultancy or people who do manufacturing, it is the broad spectrum of supply chain as a whole. Now, what we've seen recently here in the UK, but also we've got officers in Singapore and looking at opening one in India very soon, is the supply chain has opened the world. The world has actually shrunk in the way that people can communicate, can do business. And we know that the expansion of businesses going forward will be very technology driven. And it, it means that companies can be smaller, or have more profit. They can also work 24 hours a day. And the next phase around chatbots or automation is you have got 24 hour customer services in multiple languages. We are seeing now with the healthcare system, the, the supply chain of the healthcare system is globally broken, um, but everybody will survive this we we know that the the covid situation is going to end it might be six months it might be 12 months but it will end and there's a lot of doom and gloom but the positivities out of this is a lot of companies have now got time to press the reset button for what they are doing. Take a step back, look at how you do. Where is the waste? Do you need to travel hours to have a meeting when you can have 15 meetings in a day, all from your office instead of two or three meetings? And people's perception that you can't have a true meeting without being face to face are gone. We know that we're doing it today, we're doing it right this second, that we are having a meeting with people that I would never meet. There's 70 plus people on this platform, but you can expand it to hundreds, you can expand it to thousands. And most people who are in business go to conferences. They go to seminars or they go to conference centers and spend a large amount of money to put on a show for two days to tell people what they do. Why? We've got the internet. We can now do all this virtually. You can have a virtual conference. So it's bringing customers to you. You can also start using technology to do virtual tools of your location so everybody can see what you are doing if you are in manufacturing you can do a virtual tour and place it online and anybody can access it anytime so you are opening up the opportunities there are multiple companies around the world who can operate who can do um bring in new customers but nobody knows who you are and this is where with technology you can come to the forefront you can now accelerate your businesses by going and looking at what online facilities are out there for new emerging technologies. We are seeing the growth now of 3D printing, and this is the next generation that is gonna come in. Why do you need to ship a part 
half the way around the world, wait six to eight weeks for it to land when you can send the blueprint and have it printed in that country. We are looking at how we can do all this, but the technology is that we, a few weeks ago, it was all over the news, how we can save the planet, how we can start being greener, how we can start working better. And it's been a forefront. Very bizarrely, if you look at the global map at the moment, it is repairing itself within a short couple of days or weeks. We are seeing the CO2, we are seeing the climate change because people aren't using cars, planes aren't flying as much. And the earth is a great place. It will self-heal, it will repair itself. And if anything, this whole situation has enhanced what everybody has been trying to say. But as humans, we are stuck in our old ways. Nobody likes change. When I manage very large teams, one of the biggest issues is if it's not fixed, why? If it's not broken, why fix it? So secondly, we one of the other comments is we have always done it this way. Why should we fix why should we change and why should we adapt? Because people evolve. Jeff Bezos in a very, very short period of time, has created a global business. Why? Because he's not afraid of bringing in something that is completely different. And it works. We know it works. Look at Airbnb. They don't own any hotels, but they are very large hoteliers. And the disruption of the market has started to take hold. And businesses out there whether you're in India, whether you're in the UK, or wherever you are, you can trade, not with your neighbour, or not with your next town or city, you can trade globally. And it is irrespective of what you do as a product, as a service, or whether you manufacture something, you can now tap into a global market. And the, the way the everything is progressing and everything that we are seeing highlights this fact cashless systems we know that within china and also we here in the uk covid19 quite possibly not been scientifically proven as yet but could quite possibly be transferred via the handling of cash so we are moving and being forced into using cashless systems and it, it's very easy but the next phase is to bring in digital cash so you can trade anywhere in the world without the expense of fx or without the express expense of the banking system you can do it peer to peer, currency to currency. The technology is there. It is now a case of pushing that forward and bringing everybody together. It, the way that we will get through this and the way we will be better in 2021 and, and so forth is everybody working together. The governments will be looking at businesses to start going forward. The barriers, the restrictions, will be a lot lower than they have been. Why? Because every single economy globally has been hit by this. And the world needs to have a big open sign on it once the situation slowed and has disappeared. And it will look back in history. This is one blip on history. And it will be written into the history books and unfortunately, a lot of people will lose their lives, but we need to stay positive. And technology is the way that we can do that by going forward, by everybody communicating with each other and seeing how we can work together no matter where you are. The supply chain industry as a whole and everybody is in the supply chain industry, regardless of what your mentality of what a supply chain is. Whether you are a consultant, whether you're an accountant, a lawyer, or whether you manufacture something, you are within the supply of businesses. And we need to take that mentality. And we have done extensive research. And for us, the current climate situation could not be any better to get this message across. People are sitting at home, people are sitting behind the laptops and also looking at how they can survive their business going forward and this is where we need to get that message across today and to others that 
technology is out there. Cloud platforms are out there. Some are expensive, some are relatively cheap. But we know that the market out there for you to communicate is open source products that are there for everybody to start adapting. Your business, take it back today or next week and start evaluating of what it actually is you do as a business and how you can start bringing in technology to do that. People don't need to be in one office building to work if you are a technology company. We have got a lot, very large team that work around the world, that work from home on computers. We don't need expensive large buildings and 200, 300 people in there, 400, 1,000. We can do that. We, we can decentralize our industry. I know not everybody can do that. Manufacturing is one, agriculture is another. But we are bringing in the technologies that will enable people to do it. In the UK at the moment, we, we are coming into our... Um, harvest season going forward we have got an issue with manpower there is new emerging technologies coming on which will autonomously pick products or that is probably another two years away so but this is going to accelerate everything and the whole of how we work has been changed and rewritten so what one message I want to get across today is your business will and can survive going forward so long as you start to look at what it is within your supply chain you can do to adopt new emerging technologies. It's not doom and gloom, it's about change. And the companies that will shoot through the roof once all this situation is over is those that have adapted to change. It's not that easy to do, I understand, because we have been trying to tell large corporates for several years to start changing. What has happened is people are going to have to be forced to change, and the COVID-19 situation is one of them situations. We've never seen, experienced it in a lifetime, two lifetimes, of the whole planet being disrupted by an entity that has not been a war with countries fighting against each other. Everybody is now fighting against the invisible en en enemy, which is COVID-19. So we we have got a fantastic opportunity to push new emerging technologies, push new ideas. Everybody is prepared to listen at this moment in time of how their business will survive. CEOs, owners, directors, everybody has got open ears at this moment in time of how they can go forward. And one of them is through new emerging technology. What we have done for the past um, several years is to look at how the whole supply chain, just-in-time supply chain works. And it is fragmented. It has been broken. However, everything is moving forward now. Like I say, with, with this situation, it's been accelerated. It's been put on the top of the agenda of, I would say, 99% of companies of how they can start still operating in a climate where we are. It's going to change. We are going to go back to how we were, but hopefully this will stay into people's minds for a very long time that, yes, you can work from home. Yes, you don't need a car to go or a plane or jump on a train to go and meet people. You can do it face to face like we're doing today. So what is important is everybody to remain extremely positive and to start searching new technologies for your supply chain. And if your suppliers are not on the list to adopt, you need to start reviewing your supply chain to make it easier for you, to make it more efficient, costly, energy, and human resources, because it is possible to do it, no matter where you are. And the understanding of how it can be done is out there. There's plenty of companies that will assist, and the technology, the, India is a fantastic place that we know for building technology. So you are in a fantastic place to start adapting going forward. The mindset has been reset and it's positivity going forward. So within the markets that we are expanding in globally, not just Yotta, but as a whole, is about going digitalized, smart contracts, which are 
out there. They're not extremely difficult to set up. They will help you understand your end-to-end -end supply chain and the adoption of new digitalized currencies that you can start adopting will enhance businesses regardless of what your business is the whole supply chain of business is there to be disrupted and it, it's a very positive way to view this and every single person on here today should start reviewing and looking at that as a positive way to go forward and how to adapt their business so that's an overview from me and, and i'll take any questions please um. There's a question from uh, Sadish uh, Kemani. Sadish, uh, please uh, unmute your speaker and go ahead. Good evening, all. First of all, uh, I want to thank you all guys for giving such a useful information to us. Uh, my question is currently, we are going through a long lockdown in India and majority of countries currently going with the same situation. And it's a tough time for everyone and we'll go normal soon, we hope. so. We all are at home and free. So which qualities would be built now? So which can be utilized in our business boosting later on when everything is going normal? Uh, how to invest our time in making some strategies and work on it to boost our business and economy of country after everything goes normal? It's my question. Okay, so yes, a lot of countries out there are currently on lockdown. We are. I am currently in my office at home. so. Every country is experiencing the same. Start utilizing new technologies, free technologies that are out there to start looking at what you're doing. What What is it your business does? What is it you do? We are exporter of tiles, millennium tiles. Say that again, sorry. We are, we are exporter and manufacturer of tiles in construction. Okay. We use tiles. So the export business is one, I've got a very close friend who, who does technology within export within the shipping industry it that is moving forward the shipping industry import and export is still one industry that works on clipboards and checklists it can all be digitalized it will make your life a lot easier you have now got this unprecedented time to start looking and reviewing new manufacture tiles the the manufacturer will possibly not change so you will still have people manufacturing tiles it is the supply chain elements that you can actually start looking at what the new emerging technologies are out there smart contracts are really good because you can start looking at just in time productivity so you're not over producing you're not under producing you will know in real time how many items an individual will require so the technology is there. Have spend this gifted time to start looking at what your business can start digitalizing, and it will bring in cost benefits at the same time. Lecture would like to ask something. I'm um, actually actually I have started a develop software development and training firm just a couple of months before this COVID nineteen thing. So my I have a couple of questions for you. First one is uh, how should I use this as an opportunity? rather there's a liability for my business at initial in initial stages and the second question is which business model is better like launching your product early whatever it is like if you're launching a website launching it early in a raw state or launching it after some time but in the final state okay so go to your first question when you start talking about whether you should launch on beta which is version one yeah. Then, if you look at history, Snapchat was bought by Facebook, still in beta. The iPhone 3 came out, then we had the 4. Everything is about progression. As long as you've got a roadmap that your beta is going to be quickly evolved into version 1, version 2, that is where we see the greatest expansion within technology. Is there any harm launching beta? Not at all, because a lot of technology, even Microsoft, even Windows, will launch beta versions. Do it to a small group. Do it to a peer-to-peer -peer group who can give you feedback of what the, the issues are, what they're finding. People who are positive, don't get feedback of people who say it's rubbish or it'll never work. 
and get leave them to one side. Bring in the people who will give you positive feedback and say, if you was to do this, it would make you a lot better. So there is no reason why you can't launch a beta version as long as you know that version one, version two are all going to progress. Everything is about onward progressing. So I would, whatever software it is or hardware, I yes, I would push it out to a small peer group so you can get the feedback off them and then do a, a soft launch and then progress. But you might find that you only need to do a soft launch because then peer-to-peer -peer will actually come into the equation. Thank you for the help, Gary. No problem. Hi. This is a lecture. I would like to ask you a question next. Hi, Gary. So the, my Hello. question is uh, regarding that we have created a new platform, which is the new future for the India. That is blockchain plus AI. So what are your thoughts where the, we are seeing that the, after the global, this global impact of the coronavirus, there are going to be a very huge job loss, which will be, I think, taken care by the blockchain and AI because at the end, which are the people who are uh, skilling in blockchain and AI, either they are going to survive or whether they are not getting skilled, they will uh, at the end face some consequences because company will fire, company will fire, they will not uh, decrease their profit, they will and then keep their profit and fire the employees. So what are your thoughts? How will we keep uh, fight and uh, avoid the 2008 scenario? Yeah, so we we are in a, the same industry. So we, we do primarily blockchain, AI, machine, deep learning, so, so on. So our industry, exactly the same. If we look back in history to the dot-com era, dot-com saw the expansion of the internet and internet-based companies. There are some that are going to accelerate and grow and grow into global conglomerates. There'll be a lot that fail, but AI along with blockchain technology, machine deep learning, new emerging technologies, they are at the forefront going forward. You're in a very good position, exactly the same as where we are, is that people are looking at new technologies that mean it's less manpower, more efficient, and it can be deployed very quickly. AI as a whole, the, the two topics, blockchain and AI, are very misrepresented. Blockchain technology has been slightly marred with the Bitcoin and, and so on. That is not blockchain technology. Blockchain technology is about a decentralized platforms. AI or artificial intelligence is about machine adaptation of how we do processes. And we know the, from extensive research that it is evolving very rapidly. Even after the COVID situation, even after we will possibly be walking through what the dreadful term of collateral damage of COVID will be, is a lot of failed businesses, a lot of traditional businesses will collapse but the technology companies will be the ones who are are the phoenix from the ashes and we will start to see the expansion because it's cost efficient and it is what people are looking for at this moment in time hello gary hi yeah, so I recently came across something called as Hedera hash graph and uh, many people have been saying that uh, the the way it works and its efficiency is better than blockchain. So what are your thoughts about it? Uh, will Hedera soon replace blockchain or what's uh, its future going to be? So blockchain is a, a word. So distributed ledger technology, which is what it actually is. But if we if we say DLT, it confuses people because they, they have understood what a blockchain is. So distributed ledger technology is using ledgers that are distributed. It, it tells you what it is on the tin, basically. And there is many, many variations of it. And it's going to evolve. A bit like I said to the chat just shortly, is it's about the adaptation of the technology. Blockchain technology within Ethereum or whether it's in Ripple or whatever it is at this moment is very clunky. It is it, scalability is difficult. We we know that there are other platforms and we are devising speak that will enable scalability will be quicker will be 
able to perform a lot smoother. So it is a new emerging market and DLT as a whole is where we need to look at the expansion. It's not going to be one software fix fixes everything where google dominates at the moment we're not likely to see a single dominator because people will want their own ledgers private ledgers and that is where we see the expansion within businesses within corporate so is the scope yes will it evolve will it become better most definitely and that is where we will see in the next several years the expansion especially after the back of this covid situation so there is a lot that work for one organization but won't work for another so where you're saying that there are multiple entities out there yes there are and everybody will find the one that actually works for them and the landscape will be a lot different in two years time than where it is today thank you for the insights no problem All right um thank you uh, any more questions i think uh, we'll stop here and thank you very much gary for your time um it was uh, quite an interactive session and thank you very much for entire uh, the presentation. We will be sending you all an uh, email with, uh, which has got a link, a, a small survey from Wazwani Foundation. You need to fill up that and whoever gets uh, that form filled will get a 30 minutes uh, a free consultation with Wadwani Foundation team, uh, either on a Zoom or a, on a Skype uh, remote call. Uh, plus, um, from SPAM Media, you will be getting a, the March issue of the uh, digital edition of the magazine uh, complimentary. Plus, um, any SMEs who would like to uh, plays a uh, uh, classified ads, uh, which will definitely reach a lot of other you know, entrepreneurs. Uh, it's a good opportunity for you to. So we will send you an email with that request and the specifications. So probably you can just get back to us. So we are trying to reach a video of this uh, uh, webinar after editing. We'll be sharing with a lot of uh, platforms. We are in talks with Geo to, to, to upload this on their Geo TV, so which will hopefully be done. And plus, we'll be sending it to the entire media and uh, we'll be also publishing on all sites as well. So thank you once again. So um, who are staying back, uh, you can come to our social launch. Uh, probably you can get back there and start interacting with any uh, of those who are sitting next to you or uh, any of the speakers or any experts uh, who will be in uh, boxes available. And uh, the whole team from Kogoport and Wadawani team, uh, they were available. So you can just check. Gary is there. He has given his uh, email ID for anyone who wants to get get directly to him, ask any questions. So um, thank you once again, all of you, and uh, uh, we look forward to your next uh, webinar, which is coming on the 4th of uh, April. So we will have a webinar every week with various subjects. Uh, we will try to improve our webinar. This is the second webinar. Apologies for any kind of technical issues that you might have faced, but we'll try and um, you know, make it more interesting, more, uh, you know, quality content with a lot of expert speakers. Uh, we would welcome you all to register. We will be starting our complete campaign once again. Thank you once again. Thank you all.